Hello YouTube, this is Frono. Welcome back to my 24 hour challenge where I try to build as many redstone contraptions as possible in 24 hours on a fresh survival world. In the last episode we set up a few basics and built a villager breeder and a few villagers are waiting for us and hopefully a few babies as well. Oh, one. But since I don't plan to go caving any further, so we were lucky that we found churches in our village. So we have two brewing stands, we can, move, we can make two clerics that sell us redstone and the rest we'll get anyway from our villagers. So no caving, but that means we have to get our stone from somewhere and that will be a cobble generator. So let's set one up quickly. I think I just built it behind the village operator somewhere around here. So we'll use anything to mark this. And we need a 9x9 collection area. That means we have a hopper in the middle, which is just marked by a pole. And then we go diagonally outwards four blocks. And we just use any building blocks with a bit of blast resistance to mark the area. That's it. And now we need water at the corners. So let's do an infinite... So we have an infinite water source here. And that means the water will exactly go to the middle, everything will go in here. And now we replace that with a slab. So we have one slab here and that means we can have a chest, a double chest below. And now we will just dig our way out here. Here we have a hopper. Now we just need a chest. And now I'll use Light Medica because the height is somewhat critical. If we build a cobble generator too high, then most of the cobble will land on the outside. If we build a duper too high or too low, we might actually blow up our collection system. And we just need something to climb up. And we'll just grab some ladders. And this is just a very basic cobble generator. So this will be the side that we will push out, but we need something temporary to hold the water in. And then we will have the pistons pushing here. So we'll use seven pistons here and just any type of solid block behind them. And now we'll have the water coming from the side and these are solid blocks so we can place water there. And then we just put any block on top here and any blocks to hold in the lava. So we can use bottom slabs for example, but we can also use other blocks. And now we need a clock that pushes the pistons and the clock has to be 1.6 seconds or slower. So let's just use a very basic clock using repeaters. So that's 0 0.8 seconds. That's 1.2 seconds. And the clock has to be slow enough that the lava can regenerate. And now we just need some blocks here on the pistons as well. And now we can put in lava just here in the middle. And this should Yeah. And this should generate cobble. There we go. And now we built a TNT duper. And if you want a tutorial for this duper, check out Ian Xofor's video on his tree farm. And the great thing about this duper is that it doesn't need any slime. It doesn't need even sticky pistons. All you need is a couple of observers. And now we need a clock with about five repeaters set to maximum delay. Doesn't really matter in which direction you build it. Be a bit careful about updating this observer. If you update it once, the TNT will explode harmless, that's okay.
And now our cobble generator should run. There we go. We could add a lever to be able to turn this off. But other than that, we're good. And now we can use our little lava farm here to power our furnaces. And we'll add some hoppers as soon as we have an iron farm rigged. And now let's just grab a bit of cobble and smelt it up so that we have stone bricks for our iron farm. And I guess now it's time to AFK again for a few minutes until we have smelted up the cobble here and our cobble generator has produced a bit more. Four hours in, let's get cracking with the iron farm. Once again I prepared a light medic up primarily to get the measurements here at the top right, the distance between the villagers. I will talk about that later when I build it. But the question many of you might have is why not just build ENXO4's simple iron farm? Well, there are two reasons. The first reason is it doesn't give enough iron. We want to trade a lot of iron with villagers and even though that is AFK time, I don't want to wait for eternity until I get enough iron to trade. And the second reason is that I really prefer to have the iron farm out of the way. Villagers need 11 blocks distance to other villagers so that they can spawn iron golems independently. So this farm here with four pots of three villagers will be able to spawn four golems at a time. And they need 16 blocks distance to other iron golems. So by just having this 16 blocks in the sky, I make sure that if any iron golems appear here at the ground or in the caves below, this won't hurt the iron farm. So this is just to make sure that the iron farm is out of the way and it doesn't stop working at some times. Also, there's no risk that any villagers could pathfind to the beds and claim the beds. I think it, it's worth the time investment. It doesn't take that long to build such an iron farm. Later, we want an item filter for the iron and the crafter to craft the iron to blocks. And we want to compost the bone meal and stuff like that. So for now, this is not necessary. I will just start with one hopper. You might notice I am pretty much ultra conservative with iron until I have an iron farm. And the reason is that we have to bring in two zombies somehow. And I will use minecarts to do that. And if I have to build a minecart track, then I will also bring in the villagers using minecarts because that's much easier than using their pathfinding AI. So I saved all of the iron. Luckily, I got quite a lot from, from caving because I had such an iron vein. And I will use this iron later to produce some minecarts. Okay, let's start with the main structure. Iron golems are three blocks high. So all we need is one hopper. And until we have more iron, I would just use a chest here. And then we'll have a water stream moving the items here. And I will just use a bit of glass so that we can see the iron golems. And now just use a water bucket and later when you build a farm you can actually jump down. The, last, the very last thing that we bring in will of course be the lava. And you don't really have to use glass. I just think it's nice to see what's going on here. And since we've got a lightning, whenever you work with villagers, always make sure to have a lightning rod somewhere. Or they might turn into witches, which is really tough luck if this hits, for example, a trading hall and all your good librarians are suddenly gone. And now just to get in and out of the farm, I will use a few ladders after I've slept. Okay, and here on the inside, we just use some signs on the next layer. And on these signs, we can place lava. So if we place them like this, the iron golems will still be killed. This structure is three blocks high. We want at least 16 blocks. So we go about 13 blocks more in the air. So the structure is in the middle, we have a three by three drop chute. So the golems can fall in. They can't push each other or obstruct each other in any other way. And we ensure that the spawning platform is at least 16 blocks over the killing chamber. So as soon as a golem falls into the drop chute, 
It's out of detection range for the villagers and the 30 seconds counter starts again. And then we build a platform with water streams leading to the drop chute. The exact dimensions aren't really important, but I suggest to make it something like 16 by 16 in total. The important thing is later that the villagers have enough distance between them. So here we have two upper platforms, eight blocks wide, which is exactly the distance that the water can travel. Two more inner platforms, three blocks wide, moving the golems from the outside to the center. On the outside we use fences, one block away, so hopefully no golems will get caught on the fences. We use once more signs to hold in the water. Would be nasty if the water flows down on the lava. We put in the water streams. And yes, I've used ice for a year, so I forgot how to do this efficiently. And then we mirror the same thing on the other side. The platforms are made out of slabs and not out of full blocks. Mobs cannot pathfind on top slabs and so they can't fight the water streams. The next step is the clock and the zombie chambers. We will need two zombies and both of them will need to be pushed up exactly at the same time. Villagers must sleep if you want them to produce iron golems. On the other hand we need to scare them. So we will have the piston pushing a zombie up and down. If it's up it has line of sight and scares the villager. If it's down the villagers can sleep. But zombies only have an 8 block range so we will use two zombies and to get maximum rates we will have to push them up and down at exactly the same time. So we have pistons here on the outside and a clock in the middle. The next step are the holding pots for the villagers. And of course this whole design was done by Gnembon. So for each villager cell we have one glass block where they stand on. And we have iron chains preventing them from jumping down the platform. And on the other sides we will have beds. And if they get out of the beds, the only place to go is on the glass block because we will put carpets on the beds so the villagers can stand on the beds. Repeat this for the other three corners. And again, we will have 11 blocks distance between the glass blocks so the villagers are really 12 blocks away, which is 10 blocks that they need to spawn iron golems independently. And on top is a little walkway. This is the way we will bring in the villagers because they will go from the walkway to their beds and jump down. Also make sure that the beds and the clock are high enough over the water, at least three blocks, so that the golems don't get stuck. And the last step is to build a little railway from the villager breeder up to the walkway. On average, every third rail needs to be powered so that the minecart doesn't get stuck. So this is the way to easily pick up the villagers. The water stream pushes them to the side. So what we can just do is a minecart coming from down here. So we need some solid block. And I would start with the powered rails like so. And we can just use levers. They just cost sticks and cobble to power the rails. And now we need to go up of course. Now for the villager transport it's a good idea to make sure that most of the area here is lit up, so let's just use mini huts light display and we basically need an area of maybe 30 blocks in each direction so that mobs can spot us. Okay, and now the best way to test this is to go yourself into the minecart. So let's remove this block here for a moment, get in and just start moving. Yes, this is looking good. Okay, forgot to place the activator rail here on top. So let's maybe place the activator rail here. So the villagers have actually four spots to be unloaded, but they should be able to pathfind to each of the beds. Of course, you never know with villagers. Well, the idea that the villager will go to its bed and lay down worked for the first one. But for some reason, the second and third decided to walk off the walkway into the kill area. So what I did was to erect two high walls with just some openings at the corners so that the villagers had a harder time committing the unspeakable. It's important that you do all this at night because only at night the villagers will try to get to their beds. And this time it worked pretty well. Most of the villagers went to their beds, except for one who probably had linked up to my bed.
So it took two nights, but eventually all of the beds were filled, all of the villagers were in. Of course, afterwards I cleaned up the temporary structure, removed the walkways and the walls. While we wait, let's prepare the zombie trap. Now, we just lit up everything, but that's okay. We will just lure the zombie into a 2 deep hole. Let's say here. And I want to have rails down here. And then we'll just move the zombie out here. We can use a lever here. To have the minecart go back and forth with some luck. luck the zombie will be in the minecart. Okay. And then we can later replace the rails and move rails up here and connect it to this part. And we use the usual trick of luring the zombie over trapdoors. So they think they can walk over the trapdoors. And all that we need to do is to lure them here. We can also have this. So we can jump over the over tra open trapdoors. The zombie will fall down and hopefully be captured by the minecart. So this guy is now not longer necessary. And we can remove all of these temporary structures here. And of course the next step will be to bring the zombie in. There we have a zombie. And I think he's seen us. Now let's see if he picks up an item. No, he doesn't. Okay. No problem. So, there he is. And right now, he's in a minecart. So he can't despawn. But you can actually keep the zombie in the minecart. He will still be able to scare the villagers. So let's deviate a bit from our plan. So go in here and we just put a solid block here and then rails like so. This. So hopefully this minecart will have enough momentum. Let's give it a try. All right, it's almost night again. I placed the powered rail under the zombie so all that we in theory need is to power this rail. Then the zombie should go over there and then should go up. And then we can use this trap for the next zombie. Okay, now it should be safe. There we go. Zombie is on its way. And it goes in there. And we have an iron golem. Look at that. And the villagers are scared and in between they are able to sleep for a short time, which is enough. So let's prepare the farm for the next zombie. So all we need to do, and there comes the next iron golem, wonderful. So all we need to do is change up the rails here. Like so. And editing Fruno says this was a bad mistake, but I got away with it. Because what I did was to make all of the spots spawnable. And it could have happened that a golem spawned on these spots. The golem would have went right to the zombie and killed it. And I would have had to get in another zombie. Just turn off the clock that the zombie is not pushed up. Then the villagers will sleep and not be scared and you can clean up in peace. The zombie is protected so we need to protect it from iron golems. So this means we need to use slabs here. Otherwise an iron golem could spawn on one of these blocks and kill our zombie. And this is also why we need to remove all of the temporary blocks here. Turn off the clock and try to catch the next zombie. Come on, I'm a juicy target. There we go. Oh, few more zombies than I bargained for. But in any case, the iron farm should work again already. 
And what we can do is now place the lava. Okay. And now if we just place the lava anywhere in here in one of the middle blocks, it should float over and it should take care of these iron golems. There we go. And we have iron. Okay, it's almost night again. We can once more try to transport our zombie. All that we really need is to remove this block, then the zombie should go down and end up on this powered rail. So let's see, everything looks clear on top. Zombie will go in here. Go zombie, go. Wonderful. And now all we need to do is to remove the temporary structures. And initially I plan to have slabs on the zombie prison. However, since the zombie is sitting in a minecart, it's just a bit lower. So I just kept the walls too high, but made the upper parts to glass, which is not spawnable. So the zombie can peek out if it's pushed up, but the blocks are not spawnable. The zombie is safe because no iron golem can spawn there. Now it's rather important that the villagers can sleep. So if you have built the iron farm, observe at night and make sure that these villagers can sleep. So all of them must sleep at least for a fraction of a second. Otherwise they won't produce any iron golems. Now, that's the iron farm done. And now let's just finish up by placing a, an item filter and a crafter there. So I hope I have enough redstone. Okay, and I need to complete this hopper line, so... And right now, the iron should go in here and fill the crafter. Very nice. And we get iron blocks. And can I get one piece of redstone? No. Unfortunately not, I'm completely out of redstone. Okay, well then, since we don't have any redstone, let's say we forget about the safety for a moment and assume that only poppies can get in here. And so we remove this redstone torch. So now this filter will let everything through. Get out the filter items. And now if we get poppies in here, hopefully we'll get bone meal. There we go. All right. That's it for the second episode. We are six hours in. We have built an iron farm that cost us about two hours, including villager and zombie transport, which isn't too bad. We have a villager breeder. We have started to prepare a trading hall. And now there's nothing to do except to wait for a ton of iron, because then we'll start trading. And we also will need our villager breeder to breed up more, some more villagers. And then we'll have some clerics and we'll be able to trade redstone. But again, this is for the next episode. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe so that you don't miss the rest of the series. And see you next time. Bye bye.